Hello, I'm Pete Martin. This is Beginning Improv, lesson number one. Anyone can learn to improvise. There's nothing magical and mysterious about improvisation. It's just like any other musical skill. It can be learned and it can be made better with regular practice. And if somebody does practice improv regularly over a period of time, they will get better and more comfortable and able to do more things. We all improvise each and every day. It's called conversation. When we converse, we call upon how we've done it in the past, our knowledge of words, phrase, sentences, and the idea that we want to communicate. We don't pre-work out things. We just basically let it flow and improvise. As we age, we learn more concepts, we learn more words, we learn more phrases, and we use those as we communicate. We do exactly the same thing as a musician in improvising. As a little kid, were you able to speak fluidly from the first time you opened your mouth? Absolutely not. No kid is. How they learn how to do it is they, they s listen to what's going on around them and they start uttering sounds. First they're just kind of grunts, groans, etc. But eventually those sounds make simple words. Those simple words then turn into real words that we adults can understand. Before too long they're putting together sentences or they're putting together phrases, then they're putting together sentences, then they're putting together more than one sentence, and before very long at all, they're communicating ideas very efficiently from themselves to someone else. We learn improvising on a musical instrument the same way. We start basic, get comfortable with that, add a little more complexity, get comfortable with that, and keep doing that process. And over a long period of time, you'll just keep learning more things and putting those in your improvising. There are some requirements I'm going to ask of students to take on this beginning improv course. One is the ability to play at least a small number of tunes comfortably on your instrument and having a decent knowledge and ability of basic mechanics. You don't have to be an expert player at all to start improvising. But yet there may be expert players out there who have never improvised that want to start improvising. This would be a very good course for them too. Really, if you're just kind of in the advanced beginning stage, you can start improvising. The next requirement, and probably the most important, is you cannot be afraid of doing it. You've just got to get in there and do it. That's the way you're going to learn it. The Exercises will start very simple and get more complex as they go along. But you just can't be afraid of playing a wrong or bad note or set of notes or just being real bummed out with yourself if it doesn't sound good or right. In the beginning, especially, there just is no right or wrong. You're just finding things out. You're not playing at Carnegie Hall in front of thousands of people. You're playing by yourself for yourself. So just keep playing. If you make what you feel like is a, is a mistake, just play through it. That's so important to learn how to do.
the next thing is just have fun when you do this. To quote Lewis and Clark, this is a voyage of discovery. You're going to discover a lot of things about sounds and about yourself. One of the quickest ways of putting your own personality in your playing is through improvisation. And also because most music styles in the world, outside of classical music, are played based on improv, you'll be able to play with a lot more different people once you can feel comfortable improvising. So just do it and have fun. For the first exercise, we're going to find the first three notes in the G major scale. If you don't know what I mean when I say the first three notes in the G major scale, don't worry about it. Just find the notes and follow me along on the instrument. The notes are going to be G, A, and B. I'll show those notes here. We're going to improvise playing the open G string. That's a G note. The first finger on G is A. So we're going to use that. And then the second finger on G is B. So those are the three notes we're going to use. So the first exercise is to improvise. Just make something up using those three notes. Once again, do not worry if it is good, bad, right, wrong, etc. You're just making something up using those three notes. I'll give you an example of me doing it here. Here's a short improvisation using G, A, and B. I want you to do it a lot longer than this. the video at this point and improvise yourself using just those three notes and make sure you do it for a number of minutes not just a few seconds keep it going and give yourself a chance to explore everything you can think of within those three notes go ahead and do that here that's great good job Keep up the good work. So let's look at a couple of things now that we didn't discuss before. One is when you're improvising by yourself, there is no tempo that you have to synchronize to, and there is no background chord sound that you have to improvise to. We'll get to that down the road. So one, let's look at a couple of things that we can incorporate into our playing. Okay, the idea of space or rests is very important. Space or rests can easily have as much musical impact as notes can. So when we try improvising again, that's one thing I want you to take into account is putting some more rests in along with notes. Because we're not playing to a beat, we can play kind of at any tempo we want or totally lacking of tempo. You could be playing at one tempo and then speed up or slow down very easily when you're playing by yourself. Okay? That's all something that has to do with imparting a musical feel. 
So you can also play very different lengths of notes, even if you are at a tempo. I'm going to play those three notes again, improvising, and show you what I mean here. Once again, rests, different tempos or no tempo, if you want, and different lengths of notes. You'll see that here. Here is improvisation on G, A, and B using different tempos, using more rests, and different lengths of notes. <laughs> on those same three notes, G, A, and B, using some of the things that we've discussed. Once again, make sure you do it for at least a few minutes in a row, not just a few seconds. Give yourself a chance to explore those notes and every conceivable thing that you can think of to do with them, including rests. Now we're going to move on to exercise two. In exercise two, instead of taking three notes, we're going to take the first five notes of the G major scale, the notes G, A, B, C, and D. I'll show them to you here. The note G, once again, is open G. A, like we saw before, is the first finger on G. B is the second finger on G. The note C is the third finger on the G string, and notice that it's right next to the second finger here. And then D is just the open D string. So exercise two is to improvise using those five notes now, but yet keep in mind the things that we learned in exercise one about the timing, tempo, length of note, rest, etc. Here's an example of me playing it. Here is improvising using G, A, B, C, D. using those five notes. Pause the video here and improvise. Do it once again for a few minutes in a row. Give yourself a chance to explore all those sounds. Exercise three is going to be improvising using one complete octave of a G major scale. So it will be the notes G, 
A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. I'll show you those here. The notes of the G major scale are G, open G string, one on G is A, two on G is B, like boy, three on G is C, cat, open D, dog, one on D is E, evergreen, two on D, F sharp, Three on D is G. Good. So now that you know those notes, I will I will demonstrate improvising using all of those. Here is improvising using the entire G major scale. Once again, I want you to improvise quite a bit longer than I just did. Just like before, now I want you to pause the video and you improvise using that whole octave. Alright, very nice job. This brings to an end lesson number one. When you can do these and feel pretty comfortable with it, once again, don't worry about right, wrong, good, bad, any of that. When you are comfortable improvising on all three of those exercises, then move on to lesson number two.